just two minutes until we wait for more participants to join and then we can begin. Uh, Ishika, your voice is not fully clear. Better now? Little better, but not the best. Okay, now? It is good. Okay. If you can speak once again, such that. Okay. Uh, better now? Better? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's nice to see Mr. Durga Rajan, Mr. Gopal, oh, Mr. Kalyan Shejul from Maharashtra, Mr. Krishnamurthy, oh, Mr. Ma Ms. Madhuri Devi too. Oh, nice to see Mr. Narendra Dadlani. And we have other people too. Oh, Mr. Raghuvirendra Singh. Hello, sir. Oh, Mr. Rajiv Dagar is also here as one of the participants. Oh, Mr. Saraf, uh, Mr. Sanjay Saraf from Maharashtra. And Mr. Vembu Shankaran too. Uh, 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 you have to unmute uh, Ms. Dr. Dadlani. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Vembu Shankar is also there. And hi, Mr. Vembu. Yo, Mr. Dr. VLN Shankaran, Reddy. I can see, is also joined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Mr. VLN Reddy is also there. Nice to see uh, distinguished uh, uh, participants. Oh, Mr. Amrish Chandal is also there. And our, our, our Dr. Atri Ghosh from our Gubba Seed Lab is also there. She is the Seed Lab head of uh, Gubba Seed Lab. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Chandrasekhar Bhatt of Indo American is also there. Mr. Deepankar Pandey. Yeah. Quite a few from the industry, I can see. Yeah, yeah. You, you in this you get connected with old people, old souls. Bichri <laughs> <laughs> way, matlab dost. <laughs> maybe we can wait for a couple of more minutes. Or yeah, two. yeah. I think yeah, maybe a couple of minutes because now it's eighty-six. People are joining still. Yeah. Oh, Mister, we also have Mister uh, P. S. Dravid, ma'am. So P.S. Dravid, uh, also there. The gray hair who was the doyen in JK Seeds. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And of course, there are many, many people whom I know, but it's just in, in the interest of time, I'm not voicing out my name. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I've got, we have got also Mr. Sharad Deshpande. From, hmm. um, I just just yeah, saw yeah. 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 quite a few, quite a few of my former colleagues and friends. I can see. Good to see. Good to see. I think we have crossed hundred already. Yes, one zero four now. Shall we begin? As you wish. Okay, ma'am. A very pleasant afternoon to everyone present here. I hope you and your family has been safe during this pandemic. I am Ishika Sharma, Executive Assistant of Gubba Deepti, who is the Chief Growth Officer of Gubba Cold Storage. I am honored to take this opportunity on behalf of Gubba and NSAI to welcome you all to the most awaited webinar of this season, Seed Vigor, the Con Concept, significance, manifest, significance, Manifestation and Measurement. This webinar is brought to you by Gopa Seed Cold Storage in collaboration with National Seed Association of India. Without any further ado, let us begin. We shall start by knowing more about our organizers. We have Gopa Kiran. CEO of Gubba Cold Storage, who has been leading the company into efficient service uh, to the Indian I think, Ishika, country. will you go has... off the video because your internet is little poor? Ishika? You may have to go oh, off video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He has been the key driver. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, you better know. Mr. Kiran has been the key driver in educating pharma companies about preserving the critical products at Gupa. He has also been instrumental in creating Gupa from 0.7 million cubic feet to one of India's biggest cold storage company with 11 million cubic feet. He's inspired to make a difference to people through his study of ontology. Let's hear more about Gupa from the man himself. Over to you. Oh, thank you, Shika. I'll not take much time because I want to give more time to uh, Dr. Gadlani, such that people see, I mean, and uh, listen why they are here for. Uh, I, I, is my screen visible? Yeah, yes. Thank you. And this is a topic, I'll, I mean, as you know, um, uh, Namaskar uh, to all of uh, the seed fraternity across India and few, I can see a few people have also joined from the globe. And uh, movie kyo jate? not with the title. We go to the movie to see the to see the direction quality, to see the hero, to see the heroine, and that's what it's no wonder that I mean, 375 people have registered for uh, the webinar, and more than 125 people are live there, and many people definitely will watch the recordings at their uh, leisure time. Thanks to uh, NSAI for making this happen, and thanks to Dr. Dadzani Ki, people want to take quality, so they are here on on a working day, and that too on a Monday, and it's not an accident, ma'am. Just want to tell you that it's not an accident that and people are here. No, they want to take value. And thank you for being that great uh, person for the seed industry. So, I mean, I'll not take much of time, uh, my dear C folks, and just run through what seed is, what we are about. I mean, yeah, we are a fifth generation entrepreneur, and uh, 33 years, uh, 32 years, uh, we are into the industry. We have set up the first private sector seed cold store in, way back in 1998 especially for seed. Until then, seed was not stored in a specialized conditions. And uh, we are one of the biggest uh, uh, in, in India in terms of uh, cubic feet. Yeah, these are the various uh, seeds we store. We also have a germplasm bank where we store up to 40 years. One after Jumbo bag, we set up in 2008. And a two-ton Jumbo bag in 2010. In fact, the American who came to inaugurate our two-ton Jumbo bag facility in 2010 was really inspired this is our tanky cold storage, 10,000 ton cold storage facility, fully automated. It was inspired that uh, uh, in seed industry is also growing uh, in that level. It's not just, uh, it was, it was, um, even the back end of the industry was growing. That's what he was inspired. We were the first to set up uh, these facilities for, for the Indian seed industry. This is how a jumbo bag looks. Uh, I mean, that is how one after jumbo bag looks and a two ton jumbo bag looks. Yeah, uh, I mean, we are very proud that more than 125 companies stored their foundation seed with us. And that's, a, I mean, Gubba is the only place, only cold storage on the planet to house that. That shows the trust of the industry, you, the industry on us. And this private sector seed germplasm bank, 40 years. Yes, you give it to us. Trivedi sahab, aap humko germplasm denge, hum aapke bachyo ko swast germplasm wapis aapko denge. That is, the, that's our promise. And seed lab, yes, we are having a, a Gubba seed lab. We are the third seed lab in India to have a NABL accreditation. And uh, we are also, I mean, going more in, in our seed lab. We want, we are, uh, we also have Atri Ghosh, who is participant here in our, uh, uh, eve, in the evening. Uh, very shortly, we will be coming up with our uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, data analytics, uh, with using graphical representation, uh, analyzing your data, of past and then present and give you an access which will add value to your supply chain. Our data will add value to your supply chain uh, on, the, on the germination test, et cetera. This is uh, a view of our seed lab. Lots of things actually got added since this picture was taken. Yeah, we have a separate walk-in room. We have got three walk-in rooms uh, for our seed lab. Even for the pool crops, we have got a separate walk-in room. And uh, yeah, our, our seed lab is ISO certified. Our team is uh, again ISO certified. And this is a, simple, this is a processing uh, where we, uh, the process flow of uh, the seed lab uh, at Gubba. These are various tests we do. In fact, now uh, our team was, uh, now uh, uh, in this evening, I mean, Dr. Dadzani will more focus on our bigger test. It is the in thing now uh, with little of the market returns what we have. Yeah, now we also have a biotech lab. 
uh, under SSR method, and uh, it's been um, three, four. I mean, it's been less than six months, baby. And these are the various tests we do, and we have already inspired uh, more than ten to fifteen companies of the Indian seed industry in the last say four or five months. In, in fact, less than that. And uh, we also uh, probably in this year itself we will also come out with an SNP method. These, these are the various inventory reports which we do, and everything is ERP. We have migrated long ago, five years ago. I mean, from an Excel sheet to an ERP, more than that. In fact, much more than that. In your in your laptop or your cell phone desktop, you can check your inventory, your temperature, and um, lots of other reports like hybrid wise report. Or you will have a, 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 a truck wise report or a bay wise report or a lot wise report or a, a, what you call a product wise report and so on. You have got a FIFO. You've got age analysis into the report such that you know which seed is uh, what you call uh, the age of uh, kunsa seed purana hai. Aapko malum padega. Yeah, I mean, uh, safety of uh, products is important, and that is how we adhere to these uh, uh, certifications. You've got a, a specialized uh, rodent man who have been trained by a guy who got a who is a renowned person in WHO. These are QC team, and these are the, I mean, these are the backend people. These are the unsung heroes. These are the backend people who ensure that the quality is taken care of and uh, ensured the quality is maintained. Few awards for who we are. Yeah, this is. I mean, there's a few of our proud clientele. Actually, we've got close to 500 seed clients. So, by any chance, we got we can't put all the 500 logos over there. So, little logos which we we could able to put in there. So I keep telling, uh, he, uh, India is a different country. Like I mean, unlike India is a developing country and. More than 70% was, was dependent on agriculture. Now, right there, like I mean, uh, when I talk about the biotechnology lab or, or, or the seed lab, I keep telling, like the Fortune 500 companies, the Fortune 500 companies, I keep telling them to stick to their core competency, stick to their core competency and produce the best seed for the farmers, such that the farmers, uh, Prime Minister's vision of farmers doubling the income happen very fast. Now, you stick to your core competency and, and leave the non-core items to people like us. We will do the testing. We will do the processing. We will, we will do uh, the logistics and so on. And we have got many other, probably 90% of the Indian seed industry is pretty small, pretty, very small. And those people, uh, for them, a biotechnology lab doesn't even exist their radar. Many, many, many companies. Because it's so capital incentive and so manpower intensive, so technology driven. It takes a lot for them to uh, uh, invest. So right there, someone like, I mean, us setting up Biotech Lab will actually add a catalyst for the for those smaller companies. So with that vision, uh, we started our Biotechnology Lab. Key. Uh, it, it can be a key element to the smaller companies and the bigger companies and the medium companies too. So uh, with this brief uh, creation, uh, I'm handing over uh, the stage to Ishika. Ishika. Ishika, over to you. Yes, thank you. I request the panelists and participants to excuse me for being off video, doing that for my network issues. Moving forward, I am overwhelmed to welcome Mr. Shri R.K. Trivedi ji, who is presently working as the Director Technical in the National Seed Association of India, New Delhi. He has rich 38 years long national and international experience in seed production, seed certification, seed quality testing, plant variety product protection, varietal development and release. He has also worked as the International Seed Certification Specialist in Royal Government of Cambodia and Seed Consulted in the International Rice Research Institute, Philippines. He is the author of many books like Blue Book, Indian Minimum Seed Certification Standards, Compedium of Seed Legislation, etc. I welcome you, sir, handing it over to you. Thank you. Namaskar. First of all, I thanks to Mr. Kiran uh, Gubba and also the Gubba Seeds uh, for organizing this webinar. And I, in fact, we are very happy when we are joining the hands with the Gupa in organizing this webinar. And uh, I just would like to give a brief about the National Seed Association of India. 
uh, you all may be aware that NSCI is one of the apex seed industry, uh, association of the Indian seed industry. We are having medium, small, big, all sort of seed companies, and almost around 400 seed companies are our members, which includes the public sector seed corporations also. Our NSCI is having close cooperation and close arrangements with the, with the central government, state governments, regulatory authorities, and we assist them for development of policies which are useful for the growth of the Indian agriculture as well as the seed sector of the country. We are also in continued dialogue with the regulatory authorities and government officers. And also we are working as a bridge between the government agencies and the regulatory authorities. And whatever the problems or issues of the government seed industries are there, we bring before the regulatory authorities and the government authorities. And also the policies developed are the rules, regulations, or guidelines developed by the government agencies or regulatory authorities, we spread it to, to our members. So our main role is to make a bridge between the seed companies and the regulatory authorities. In addition to this, we are also encouraging the investment, innovation, and R&D to bring to the Indian farmers best genetic materials. And for that, we are providing training, technical knowledge, and all other things to our members. And this webinar is also a part of that to enhance the technical capabilities and to also impart the training and knowledge to our member companies. In fact, um, uh, I know Dr. Malvika Dadlali, who is the, she is the main speaker for this today's webinar. And uh, she is uh, very um, knowledgeable and very experienced in the seed sector. And I had, I had an opportunity to work with her, for, and I know her for the last 30 years. So this is the real topic, the seed vegan, which is a very important seed quality attribute. And I think uh, we all will be get benefited with the, with the lecture up and um, the knowledge of Mrs. Ma Dr. Malvika Dadlaniji. So I just, uh, I would, don't want to take much time because I don't want to come between you and the, ex uh, and the expert. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We are now about to begin the most exciting session of today's evening. It's our privilege to have Dr. Malvika Dadlani ji with us here. She is the former Joint Director Research and Head Division of Seed Science Technology, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. She has nearly 40 years of research, teaching, extension, manage, and management experience. She is well known nationally and internationally in the field of seed science and technology. She was a member of the Easter Wigger Committee from 2001 for 10 years and she is currently a member of the Seed Science Advisory Group of ISTA. Her areas of special interest include seed viability, bigger uh, irrigation, variety purity, seed production, quality assurance systems, etc. She has served various high-level committees in India dealing with technical policy and regulatory issues. She received several awards and recognitions for her contributions in the area of seed research and teaching. Over to you, ma'am. We welcome you. Ma'am, you have to mute. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ishika, for your very kind words of introduction. Thank you, Kiranji. Thank you, Trivedi ji, uh, for your kind words. And most importantly, for inviting me uh, to give this uh, presentation in today's webinar. Uh, that too, uh, on a topic which is very close to my heart where I have been uh, working for the last more than 40 years. And uh, I would also like to thank all the uh, attendees and the panelists, participants, because uh, Ishika told me and uh, Kiranji also mentioned that there was a very large number of participation. And he was talking about something like a good movie and the star cast. So I just hope that uh, I will not disappoint you or the participants today. It will be my effort. But as far as I'm concerned, it is always a pleasure to talk about seed, particularly seed vigor and viability, where I was uh, initiated into this by my uh, late teacher, Professor Arin Basu, 
1974 when I started my doctoral uh, research with him. Uh, unfortunately, he has uh, passed away a couple of months back on the 6th of March this year. So my today's presentation, uh, I dedicate to him. Uh, with these words, I would uh, like to start my presentation. And before that, I would like to uh, apologize that I might uh, need to uh, uh, stop my video because uh, it gives the instability to my connectivity. And uh, just I will need a couple of seconds to start my uh, sharing my screen. So with that, I will start my presentation. Uh, Ishika, can you please uh, unshare your screen? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Done, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am, visible. Yeah. Sorry, I'll just. Right? Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Ishika? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you see me? Can you yes, see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You and screen both visible. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, good afternoon to all of you to this uh, today's webinar on seed vigor, the concept, significance, manifestations, and measurement. Uh, to this group, which is... Uh, I was told that uh, there is a good uh, mix from both uh, the industry as well as uh, uh, the researchers. We all are aware about the importance of quality seed. It is a key driver in agriculture. And though the cost of the seed may be or 6% in case of open pollinated varieties or a maximum of about 10%, in case of the hybrids, it is very important because at the end of the day, it is about 50 to 20 percent that it can uh, influence, uh, that is up to uh, which range it can influence the productivity. And therefore, truly, uh, quality seed is the one which helps produce more from less. Particularly if the variety uh, is such which has value added traits or we have uh, now, nowadays we also have very good seed additives, which can further reduce losses due to both the biotic and abiotic stresses. And thus it is the key, as I say, is not only as a driver in agriculture, but also for sustainable agriculture. So the primary attributes of seed quality are though only the variety purity, physical purity, moisture and germination and seed health now, which is now being included in the proposed new seed bill. Uh, there is a uh, vigor, which is not listed as per law as an essential determinant of the planting value of the seed, but actually plays a very important role in the overall uh, uh, performance of a given seed stock, as we will see in today's presentation. Uh, this is uh, a situation where the field emergence uh, uh, has been shown uh, in both the cases, the left as well as right, the uh, seed lots were certified seed lots where germination was above 85%. And yet you can see 
the difference in terms of the emergence and stand establishment. Uh, this is not a very uh, 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 exceptional situation. This happens quite often. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the germination test is not really uh, adequate, though it is one of the most important uh, quality attributes? Is it not adequate to ascertain the planting value of seed? We know that it is based on the ability of seeds to germinate not just germinate, since the germination uh, is counted on the basis of the normal seedlings. So we are taking that also into account. It is a fairly accurate and reproducible and therefore reliable uh, test of seed quality. It is definitely an indicative of the planting value and that's why it is a essential uh, criteria which has to be given on the seed label. We know that in India, labeling is compulsory, whether the seed is certified or not, labeling is compulsory and in which germination is definitely uh, uh, indicated. And yet the high germination, germinating seeds uh, often perform very differently in the field or even after storage. Let's examine this, taking a few more examples. This is a, 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 a study, a comparative study. Uh, it, it was from Alison Powell, a very recent presentation last year in uh, Bangkok, where she presented uh, four cases, four different kinds of uh, crops, including both dicot and monocot. A uh, number of lots were pretty high. You can see that uh, in case of beans, it is 90 seed lots, garden peas 80, uh, soya bean a little less, but nonetheless, it is fairly okay. And 29 lots in case of maize. Germination percentage of all these lots were very high, fairly high. And it ranged from 75 to 100, in case of garden pea, all were above 80. Soya bean, it was from 83 to 96. And maize, it was very high, 92 to 98. And yet, if you see the field emergence, these were very much different. 48 to 98, 17 to 88, 8 to 85, 34 to 93. So in such a situation, when a farmer purchases a seed lot, making sure that it is, say, let us say, it is not just labeled, it's a certified seed, and yet, which means that it meets the germination standard, and yet when he uh, uh, sows it, sometimes this kind of situations we get, where field emergence is extremely low, below the optimum, much below the optimum. Let's take another situation. Let's say that uh, Guba, Guba coal seed storage, of course, in Guba coal seed storage, the storage conditions are uh, controlled and at a low temperature where germination and hence storability is substantially improved and we have seen how many seed companies are using this facility. Why? They all have their uh, own storage facilities. And uh, uh, some of them also might be having a uh, control seed storage, but mostly the small and medium seed producers, they store their seeds, the bulk seeds, I, I'm, I'm saying, under non-conditioned storage. And uh, when they start, the situation can be like this, uh, in which there were four lots, all having above 90% germination. And after 12 months of storage, under similar storage conditions, one is showing 66% 
germination. The other one is showing 9% germination. So this and this are very comparable, whereas these two are not at all comparable. So how, how the uh, seed producer or sometimes the seller is supposed to know that uh, which lot is the one which is going to store well and which one is not going to store that well. So that's a question. So uh, how, how do we differentiate? It's, you know, it's like uh, all, all a number of persons, they take part in a particular uh, activity where uh, physical stamina is very important. That may be a marathon race or that may be any particular task given to them. They all have similar comparable weight, heights, and other parameters, physical parameters. And yet at the time of performance, uh, there is something called their stamina because of which they perform very differently, especially if the conditions are more stressful. This difference in stamina is evident even more. What we call stamina in the human beings, we call vigor in seed. So what is this? What is the seed vigor that we all are talking so much about? Now, it is not really a very uh, simple thing to, uh, to define seed vigor or to understand the concept of seed vigor. And it is... Uh, um, a very evident from the fact that it took more than 100 years, even to the most uh, experienced, knowledgeable seed technologists come to the come to a very formal, a very uh, definite concept of seed vigor, starting from late 1800. When the farmers and the seedsmen only were aware about the dense seeds, sometimes they, they also took larger seeds to be more vigorous. It was just based on their uh, past experiences that large and dense seeds perform better. Then about the uh, beginning of the uh, 20th century, 1911, Hiltner and Eisen, they for the first time while testing, simply they were testing germination in a, in a gravel uh, material, substrate, and they realized that the, uh, the seed lots where uh, there, were, there was more prevalence of fusarium could uh, uh, emerge out of the uh, uh, substratum out of the uh, brick, brick gravel. And later on, this observation gave to the concept of vigor. And later, much later, I'll come to that uh, after some time. It is the brick gravel test which uh, developed out of this uh, observation. And then also, it was uh, observed over, an, over a period of time, that uh, when there is a general decline in germination, so the seeds which germinated, which produced normal seedling, for example, if you have two seed lots having 62% germination and 96% germination, so the normal seedlings which you are counting for germination test there also there is a difference in terms of vigor of these 62 versus 96 of the other lot. That means the seeds which have survived, there is some difference in terms of their uh, performing ability. Again, it was not yet, there was no formal concept of vigor till that time. In the early 90s, in the 19, uh, not early, mid 90s, in 1950s, the Congress 
first time it was discussed by the siege analysts that there is a difference a the way germination test results are uh, recorded by the european and american laboratories and there is some difference in terms of vigor that was discussed for the first time and subsequently a biochemical and seedling vigor committee was proposed and the first vigor test which was proposed the two vigor tests were proposed for the first time by the uh, ESTA and the AOSA uh, the, and these were tetrazolium and cold test for seed vigor so uh, uh, by the late 50s ILA gave the first uh, kind of a definition that it is the property that property of seed which ensures successful establishment of a seedling under a wide range of field condition now uh, later on i will come to that a minute later that uh, it was realized that it is not just the field performance there are other activities also it was also known that uh, whatever it is, whatever you may call it, this vigor is at its peak at the highest at the time of seed maturity, that to field maturity. And it is manifested in several different ways. So uh, it was at that time loosely taken as a sum of many vital characteristics. Uh, which determine the overall planting value in the field, particularly the stand establishment and also storability. So the first uh, official definition came in 1977. It was given by the International Seed Testing Association. Uh, that seed vigor is the sum total of those properties of the seed, which determine the level of activity and performance of the seed or seed lot during germination and seedling emergence. More or less around the same time, the Association of Official Seed Analysts of North America, which is commonly known as AOSA, they gave an, uh, a definition that seed vigor comprises of those seed properties which determine the potential for rapid uniform emergence and development of normal seedlings under a wide range of field conditions. This was the difference between AOSA's definition and ESTA that AOSA uh, uh, identified and they had uh, uh, introduced this word under a wide range of field conditions. Now, subsequently, ESTA, as our understanding of seed vigor uh, improved, our researchers on one hand and the industry's experiences on the other, uh, ESTA is, a, is an organization where both are represented. So it kept on redefining the definition as per the present knowledges at any given point of time. And it has gone several uh, uh, redefinitions or re revisions. And at present, it has adopted a definition that it is the sum of those properties that determine the activity and performance of seed lots of acceptable germination in a wide range of environment. This, at this time, has been included as given by AOSA, that in a wide range of environment, because by now it is very clear, it is very well established that vigor is more important when growing conditions are less favorable. And acceptable germination. This also was included because if the seed 
does not meet the required standard of germination, it is understood that vigor of a 60% germination will be lower than that of a 90% germination. But since we are talking about quality assurance, therefore, this term was introduced that acceptable germination, seed lots should be of acceptable germination and their performance should be considered in a wide range of environments. This graph, I'm sure that many of you are very familiar with. It simply shows that both vigor and viability are at its peak at the time of physiological maturity. And from that point, a slow decline starts in case of viability. And in case of vigor, the decline is even faster. And this gap between the vigor and viability uh, is, is where the vigor tests are most important. Now, a good vigor test is one which can differentiate seed lots at X point of germination, having this much difference in terms of vigor. Whereas even this kind of vigor tests are also useful, but definitely this is a more precise vigor test. So uh, as I said that from physiological maturity till the seed becomes non-viable, in any seed lot we get, it's a population. A seed lot is a population. So we get all kinds of seeds. Some will be producing vigorous seedlings. Some will be producing normal, but not that vigorous seedling. Others will be producing abnormal seedlings and still others will remain dead. That is what makes seed vigor a very significant criteria of seed quality. Coming to the Seeds Act, a certified seed can be revalidated as long as the quality parameters meet the prescribed standards and revalidation is done before the uh, lapse of the first validation. However, there is always a probability of decline vigor and hence the, the planting value. Now, should we uh, overlook this or should we go for some kind of check? Should vigor testing be made mandatory for revalidated or stored seed lots? Now, to make that happen, we must have recommended vigor tests for all crops, which is not there. You'll see a little later. However, it is advisable and most of the reputed seed companies already do it, they do test vigor for such lots. And uh, even if there is no uh, requirement by the law or a provision for label claim for vigor, the good seed, I mean, responsible seed companies always go for vigor set. In fact, I think as uh, uh, Mr. Kiran just uh, informed even they do the seed vigor testing for uh, commercial seed lots. Since high seed vigor seeds have put better potential to survive and produce a good crop in a varied condition, it is an important criteria that they use high vigor seeds, which can, uh, from farmer's point of view, it is uh, beneficial because the seed rate can be reduced and therefore the cost. They have a high vigor seeds have better chance of survival. Therefore, they have better sustainability in climate change. For in-house vigor testing before marketing, therefore, is a win-win situation for both the farmers as well as the seed producing companies. Knowledge of seed Vigor is also important for inventory management because as you had seen that it definitely affects storability of seed lot. Therefore, if there are uh, high vigor seed lots that can be earmarked if in the, in the years of 
surplus production. These can be earmarked for later use and medium vigor seed lots can be immediately used for marketing. On the other hand, if there is a short production and carryover seed is to be used, it should be made uh, sure that the vigor is high or medium vigor. And if at all there are some low vigor seeds, such lots should not be used for selling. In normal years also, high vigor seeds can be sold in less favorable ecosystem, whereas medium vigor seeds can be sold in, in such situations where normally the other conditions are favorable for a better production. Now coming to what are the factors which affect uh, seed vigor? Starting from the genotype, it is the physiological status of the seed lot, growing environment, that means the mother crop, harvesting and threshing operations, storage environment, and post-harvest treatments. All these have a direct bearing on the vigor. And uh, before uh, going to the measurement, we must understand the manifestations of seed vigor, which can be from um, simple physiologic, uh, physical parameters. Like I said, one of the earliest observations were of the seedsman were that dense seeds perform better. Uh, it can be germination performance, seedling growth, seedling dry weight, seedling length, physiological or biochemical indicators, or by germinating under stress condition. Because as I said, stamina or the vigor is best expressed under less favorable or stress condition. So coming to the manifestations of seed vigor, robust seedlings are the first and the clearest manifestations of seed vigor. This is a, a, an example of simple germination where all, I mean, barring a few, most are, most have produced normal seedlings. It's a good seed lot with such large percentage of normal seedlings. And yet this is also normal. This is also normal. This is also normal. So this was one of the earliest observations by Abdul Baki and Anderson. Most of the researchers are familiar with, with who proposed vigor indices, which is uh, nothing but a, a product. I mean, germination is multiplied by either the total seedling length or total seedling weight. That weight could be dry weight or fresh weight. These are known as vigor index one and vigor index two, and a very good uh, indicator of seed vigor. Secondly, the, when we talk about germination, uh, this is at the time of the final count, but it is also the speed of germination, which is equally important. If you take two lots, lot A and lot B, high vigor and low vigor, this is very, very common that a high vigor seed lot gives, uh, uh, I mean, is one where the germination is much faster than a low vigor seed lot, or where if the conditions, this is under favorable condition. If the condition of germination is less favorable, then this kind of difference gets even more pronounced. That the speed of germination is affected by vigor and therefore it again is a good indicator of seed vigor. In fact, that's why the uh, the e star has given a first count and a final count because first count is a good measure of seed vigor. Vigor. It is degradation of biomembranes is a one of the early symptoms or early uh, impacts of seed deterioration because because it is uh, the result of lipid peroxidation and biomembranes are predominantly made up of uh, phospholipids, unsaturated, which is made up of unsaturated fatty acids. 
This degradation of biomembrane is reflected in the degree of solute leakage from soap seed. And therefore, when a seed is soaked in water, uh, many water soluble substances such as electrolytes, sugars, amino acids, etc., will leach out in the seed's deep water. Of these, electrical conductance of uh, uh, this uh, seed steep water, which is measured as, uh, which is the measure of electrolyte leakage is most widely used because it is very simple to operate and reproducibility of results is good. High leakage, poor seed bigger. Then of course, respiration, the most vital phenomenon in any living entity is respiration. Therefore, respiration and associated parameters like key respiratory enzymes or the uh, respiratory quotients, these are some of the parameters uh, or manifestations of seed vigor. And therefore, these are used for measuring uh, seed vigor. However, of these, only it is the tetrazoleum test, which is based on the activity of dehydrogenases, the enzyme in, uh, in seeds respiration, uh, which is used for bigger testing because the other, other tests like GADA, <clears throat> glutamic acid decarboxylase activity, at one time was a very a uh, very favored test for seed vigor, particularly by the researchers. But because of the I mean, complicated uh, procedure and uh, need for specific uh, instruments and trained manpower, these are not uh, really performed that often these days. The, the fifth kind of uh, vigor tests are based on the manifestation of seed vigor to withstand uh, stress conditions. This test, stress can be of any kind. It can be a mechanical stress or impact on the growing seedling. Both Hiltner and paper piercing were developed on keeping that in mind. It can be cold test or cool test. Again, it's a temperature stress. Accelerated aging is a, is a forced uh, aging test where the seed is made to lose vigor and viability in a short period of time. And therefore, this is a good uh, 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 test to see the ability to withstand the uh, harsh conditions at the time of storage. Though accelerated aging, though it is aging test, and uh, it gives a good uh, correlation with the uh, uh, storability, but it is not only to test the storability of the seed. It is a vigor test. It is as good an indicator of field performance as it is of storability. Uh, salt saturated stress test is also, you can say a kind of modified accelerated aging test. Uh, and control data, the, all three are uh, similar with based on similar principles. Uh, the red ones are uh, uh, validated by ESTA. The green ones are included by the AOSA and the rest are used by everyone, both researchers as well as seedsmen, though these are not validated. But as I said, that vigor is not an official test, but a vital test. So depending on the crop, the conditions of growth, uh, the growing conditions and other factors, one has to choose the right test for uh, assessing seed vigor. So uh, because we have now seen what are the manifestations of seed vigor, so it is simple to understand that if germination is high and vigor is also high, the, we need lower seed rate because emergence is better, crop stand is better. Vigorous seedlings 
means less mortality because under field conditions, there are many biotic, abiotic uh, factors which can cause mortality. And therefore, we, you need a seed lot, which is really vigorous. It uh, results in uniform and early emergence. Satisfactory stand establishment also gives a competitive edge over weeds. You can easily, uh, the, the, your seed lot can easily grow faster and therefore uh, no need for any other weed control measure or you can minimize such measures to a large extent. Ability to survive under less favorable condition is extremely important, especially if there is some kind of biotic and abiotic stress during vegetative stress. And finally, better storability, as I uh, mentioned earlier already, that it's a very important factor in inventory management. Also, in case of um, vegetables, or high value seeds, where uh, the seedling plugs are commonly used uh, to, to ensure that your plugs will result into good, healthy seedlings, not like this, you need high vigor seeds. And therefore, it ensures rapid and uniform germination, resulting in uniform growth, easier management, synchronized harvest, lower cost, and higher yield. There are several other direct and indirect impacts of seed vigor, and some crops are more affected or where vigor is of more importance than others. Normally, crops where the economic produce is the vegetative parts are the economic produce whether it is lettuce, spinach, cabbage, broccoli, these are most affected by vigor or to some, to, to a lesser extent, but still moderately affected are those where the, <clears throat> where the economic produce uh, is uh, say early fruiting stage, such as uh, sweet corn, tomato, garden peas, or where it is, you know, uh, a direct seeded rice. I mean, normally such crops, cereal or grain crops are the least affected or not affected, except in the uh, early vegetative stages. But if it is a direct seeded rice, yes, it is also affected. Least affected, as I said, are such crops, cereal crops, uh, which are harvested at full maturity. So the leafy or herbaceous crops are most affected. Uh, those which are harvested at early maturity or non-tillering grain crops are also affected, but to a lesser degree. And grain crops which are harvested at full maturity are least affected. It besides ability to withstand biotic and abiotic stresses during vegetative stage. So having established the significance and importance of seed vigor, it is only logical that we would like to measure seed vigor and measure it as precisely as possible. So it is required to provide a reliable indicator of seed quality both in case of fresh seed lots, stored seed lots, particularly for revalidated seed lots. To formulate a market strategy and uh, 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 inventory management. And this I would like to stress upon that let the farmer have a choice that if he can afford or if he wishes to pay 5% extra where it is high vigor seed, he should have that choice. In fact, sometimes uh, some of the brands which are very popular with farmers of any particular region 
are popular in spite of the fact that at times their prices are higher than other prevailing brands. And this is uh, for two reasons. A, that the farmers uh, are satisfied with the variety, the genotype. And two, farmers are confident about the quality. And in this quality, vigor always plays a very important role. So uh, these are some of the tests which are based on germination performance because such tests are most preferred in the, in the industry or to anyone because you don't need to conduct a separate test just by modifying the standard germination test or by taking an additional uh, observation, one can uh, determine seed vigor in a pretty reliable manner. This, these are radical emergence, first count, rate of germination or speed of germination, seedling growth and dry weight. These are the, uh, as I mentioned already, these are used for calculating the vigor indices. There are also some very uh, recent developments using these. I'll come to that a minute, a few minutes later. Then there are physiological and biochemical tests. And these are some of such tests, conductivity and other leakage tests, tetrazoleum tests, glutamic acid decarboxylic activity test, rate of respiration and uh, respiratory quotient test. Quotient is nothing but the amount of CO2 evolved divided by the amount of oxygen absorbed. Then there are stress tests, Hiltner or brick gravel test, paper piercing test, cold test, cool test, accelerated aging test, salt saturated test, and control deterioration test. A bigger test should be reproducible, of course. It should be repeatable between and within laboratories. In fact, this is the most difficult part. And that's why it takes 10 to 15 years to, well, not 15 years, but close to 10 years, 7 to 10 years to validate one single test for seed vigor by ESTA. I was a member of the working group on seed vigor for 10 years, and I've seen how much time it takes because it is very difficult to bring it to that level of precision and reproducibility. It should be preferably integrated with the standard germination test I already mentioned, should be as simple as possible. It should be rapid and cost effective. It should be interpretable and correlated with field emergence. This is a must. It must, <clears throat> sorry, it must have a high correlation with field emergence. And it should be preferably a quantitative test, measurable test, not a qualitative test. So these are the ESTA vigor test. After several rounds of comparative test, ESTA vigor committee published the handbook of vigor test methods in 1995. And from 1998 onwards, these were included in the ESTA rules. Presently, there are five vigor tests which are included in the chapter 15 of ESTA rules. Uh, these are accelerated aging test, electrical conductance of seed leachate, control deterioration, radical emergence, and tetrazoleum test for vigor. But even after two decades, these are limited only to eight species. All the tests are positively correlated with field emergence or storability, except electrical conductance, which is inversely correlated. All others are directly correlated. So these are the chronology of validation. And this is the last test was tetrazoleum vigor test, which was done only a 
couple of years back. But in all these tests, there is always a scope of uh, using these for other crops, which are not validated by ISTA. But nonetheless, these can be tested. You can try. And some of these actually give a very uh, reliable uh, uh, indication of seed vigor. So accelerated aging test is recommended for uh, glycine max, soybean, electrical conductance for glycine, Caseolus vulgaris, Sisa, Pisum, <clears throat> but P is only for vegetable P, not for field P, and raffinus satigus. Control deterioration for brassica species. Radical emergence is for quite a number of species, actually. It is for ZMAs, brassica, then raffinus, and triticum. Tetrazoleum is again only for glycine max. So uh, I'll briefly tell a little about these tests. These are the, I will not go into it because I still have a number of slides to cover. And these are available uh, with ESTA uh, handbooks. Normally, I just want to focus a few points that uh, the samples should be uh, equilibrated to a moisture content of 10 to 14 percent. This is extremely important. If the seed is too dry, the electrical conductance, which is actually based on the osmosis of, because when the seed is put in water, it is the process of osmosis through which the, the solutes leach out. So if the moisture content of the seed is too less, then actually there will be uh, 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 imbibition damage of the of the seed membrane, and that can give erroneous results. Uh, other things, uh, uh, important thing is to use a calibrated conductivity meter and using distilled or deionized water, and always using at least four replications. Higher the electrical conductance, low is the vigor. This is how the conductance is, uh, electrical conductance uh, is tested using a standard conductivity meter. This is once the uh, seeds are soaked in water, all kinds of soluble solutes, ions, I mean, electrolytes, amino acids, sugars, inorganic salts will leach out. And using an electrode, we can measure the conductance. Very simple. As I said, uh, that it should always be calibrated. There must be a, a standard or a reference uh, sample should be maintained at low temperature under desiccated conditions so that it maintains the quality for every time as a reference. E-star recommended it for soya bean, French bean, gram, garden peas, and radish. Uh, but as I said, that OA AOSA uh, recommends it for many other crops. Uh, it works well with other peas and beans. Uh, in, in seeds where there is a, a, a impermeable perica, like sunflower, lettuce, melon, tomato, it doesn't work well. But otherwise, you can try. It can. It actually works pretty well in many other crops. Accelerated aging test. This was uh, long back again. Uh, it was pr uh, proposed by Deluche and Baskin in Mississippi State Agriculture is Mississippi State University, and uh, uh, again a very commonly uh, used test, both by the researchers as well as seedsmen. The process of aging is rapid under high humidity and high temperature. Therefore, reduction in germination after accelerated aging is a direct uh, indication of its vigor. More drastic, the drop in germination, lower is the vigor. ESTA has validated this only for glycine max soybean. However, it can be used for other medium and bold seeded species 
not good for small seeds, not very suitable. Again, things that we uh, need, you can either use a accelerated aging chamber or you can simply do it in a in a, any incubator which can maintain up to 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, you need some trays and boxes, either boxes or some uh, wire mesh trays uh, uh, in which the seeds are kept and equilibrated at a high relative humidity of close to 100%. It is it should be 100% plus minus maybe 0.1%. Germination is to be tested after accelerated aging. There must be at least two replicates. Initial moisture again is important. It is performed at 41 degrees for 72 hours. Now, again, this is for, uh, as per the ESTA recommended test uh, for soybean. But if you want to do it for other crops, you can do it. Maybe instead of 72, you will need to do it for 96 or maybe less. You have to perform it for 48 hours, but it is doable. Only one has to uh, uh, ensure that the moisture absorption is not too less or not too high. In this case, for example, it should not be less than 52 one. That means not less than 10 grams uh, uh, rise in uh, seed weight or not more than 13 grams rise in seed weight. But it is also very useful for many other species. Control deterioration test is a kind of modification of accelerated aging. While in accelerated aging, the moisture content of the seed uh, goes up in the first 24 hours up to whatever is the saturation uh, equilibration moisture. In case of control deterioration, uh, the, the seed moisture content is raised to 20% right in the beginning. And then it is kept in a water bath for 24 hours at a slightly more uh, 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 at a higher temperature than accelerated aging. It is 45 degrees. And after, after the uh, control deterioration, again, it is first um, normalized at room temperature and then put for uh, standard germination testing. And just like this, it is also very, very often used by the researchers. Another very simple test which has been validated by ISTA is radical emergence test. Uh, again, as I said, that it is uh, uh, very much uh, similar to the first count. But whereas in first count, one may have to wait for in different crops, one may have to wait for five, seven, or eight days. First, uh, radical emergence is a very rapid test. And it can be performed very simply and only paper uh, uh, medium is used for radical emergence test. In this, 200 seeds are normally used, uh, either in two replications, four replications, or eight replications, only on paper medium. That can be top of the paper, between paper, or pleated paper method, uh, following Easter rules. And it is not, uh, uh, in some cases, we go for 2 mm radical uh, uh, protrusion, as in case of uh, uh, radish and wheat, whereas in uh, brassicas and maize, uh, maize also, whereas in brassicas, it is just the uh, chitting, just the uh, uh, radical appearance. Uh, even if it is less than 2 mm, that's fine, that's okay. Uh, these are the temperatures in which the uh, test is done. And this is the time of observation that has been fixed. This actually, again, is a very good test. And uh, you can try in other crops as well. The time you will have to fix as per your own experience that how much time it normally takes. I mean, initially, one can try taking a number of seed lots, maybe 10, 20, uh, 10 or 20, 
having variable germinations from 80 to 100. And then you can check what is the right, the best time to take the observation. But this is a very simple but good, uh, useful uh, Vega testing. This is the, uh, the, the latest uh, test which has been validated by Easter, that is tetrazoleum test for uh, soybean. Uh, we know that tetrazoleum is a, a test for a rapid viability test when uh, we need to assess the germinability in a short span of time. But by uh, using the topographic staining pattern, uh, it can also give us a very good uh, uh, assessment of seed bigger. Here, the only catch is that uh, it, it is a little uh, time consuming because uh, it is based on topographic evaluation uh, with a magnifying glass and you need experience. But detailed uh, manuals are available for TZ evaluation for both viability and vigor given by ESTA, AOSA, <clears throat> as well as Embrapa of Brazil. Uh, in addition to the test, uh, AOSA in fact has listed more number of vigor tests. So for example, as I had mentioned earlier, cold test is the most important test. Uh, they also include, uh, other than electrical conductivity, soap test for other leachates like sugars and potassium. Then seedling growth rate, cool test for uh, cotton, where it is uh, tested at a low temperature of 18 degrees. Speed of emergence, uh, then bigger indices based on shoot root weight, and of course, computer imaging. I'll come to that. Uh, before going to, sorry, before going to that, I thought that I must talk about cold test because though in India, because uh, we follow Easter uh, protocols, but it is, there are some tests which are listed by AOS, which are really very useful. And one such test is cold test which is uh, one of the oldest, as I mentioned al uh, uh, already. It simulates the stress situation, which are expected under field conditions, especially when uh, in temperate regions. That's why it is very common in North Americas, where <clears throat> there are chances of high soil moisture, low soil temperature, and sometimes which uh, uh, increases the pathogen activities. Um, though in our in our con uh, country, uh, maize is considered to be uh, primarily, predominantly a monsoon crop or a kharif crop, it is also grown in a considerable area as a winter crop, the larger part of North Bihar, for example. Uh, and because maize is a, is a crop which is very, very much uh, affected by low temperature stress, this is a very good test for seed bigger. Here germination is conducted for seven days at 10 degrees. And then it is uh, uh, shifted to 25 degrees for another four days. Uh, in some in some crops, I mean, this is a more recent uh, modification of cold test. It is known as saturated cold test, where in addition to moisture, I mean, temperature stress, there is also a moisture stress, excess moisture stress by creating a 100% water holding capacity of the germinating medium. It can be performed in various ways. That means in plastic box, in roll towels and trays and so on, so on and so forth. This is how it looks uh, after a cold test, a high vigor and a low vigor seed lot. 
Now, um, one of the major constraints uh, with vigor is quantification of seed vigor. It is because unlike germination, it is determined in different crops by using different manifestations or different parameters. Also, the purpose of conducting these vigor tests uh, may vary from case to case whether it is for field emergence or storability or stress tolerance and so on. Hence, there is no vigor standard as such, which is available for inclusion in the label anywhere in the world. But a responsible and reputable, reputed seed companies use vigor tests for in-house quality assessment and for assuring seed quality and of course all as i said also for their inventory management there are some uh, futuristic vigor tests which are in the process of standardization for example automated imaging seedlings are evaluated for germination vigor index growth index seedling length etc using image analysis automated image analysis Similarly, TZ is also being now uh, being standardized using image analysis and artificial intelligence. Chlorophyll fluorescence is again, particularly in case of brassicas, where it is a uh, indirect uh, test where the uh, presence of chlorophyll is actually shows a uh, low vigor condition. Chlorophyll content is uh, measured. It is a non-destructive method. Uh, as I said, it is uh, inversely correlated. Higher the fluorescence, lower is the vigor. Flow cytometry is based on the content of DNA, the proportion of 4C to 2C GNA, uh, which is again inversely proportion. If it is higher of 4C, the vigor is less. It shows the number of cells which are in the stage of cell division. This is how the automation in uh, Wicker testing looks like. It is a simple germination and seedling evaluation uh, using automation. This, uh, like Wicker as there are many other apps also coming up. Uh, where it in one go, it tells us about the vigor index, the growth index, and all other parameters, number of dead seeds, number of uh, normal seeds, and so on. And this is definitely going to be in, in, uh, in uh, what should I say, general use, hopefully in another three to four years' time, not, not beyond that. And then finally, if vigor is so important, why the breeders have not bred a high vigor uh, uh, varieties? It is a complex physiological trait, which is controlled by QTLs. Uh, and in spite of the technological advances, we are, uh, it is being made rapidly for enhancing seed vigor, but we are Still, we still, are, still do not have any varieties which are bred for high vigor. Uh, there had been a pioneering work by Wu et al. in China and uh, other groups also in genetic modification of seed vigor through the overexpression of PIMT, that is a protein isoaspartyl. <clears throat> methyl transferase uh, in seeds, which is important because as we know that during aging or during loss of vigor, uh, loss, uh, uh, a lot of cellular loss uh, happens. And during the first few hours of germination, there is cellular repair, which enables the seed to become germinable. And in this kind of genetic modification, uh, the attempt is to make this particular enzyme, PIMT, to overexpress so that it can restore the cellular damages 
rapidly and thereby the, it can help us uh, in breeding high vigor, high seed vigor varieties. So uh, in spite of over 100 years, it's still seed vigor still remains an enigma. Uh, the mechanisms that control seed vigor still are not fully understood. And as I said, breeding programs are underway, but maybe it will still be some more time before these are successful. But not to lose hope, on the other hand, uh, research both in the public and private organizations uh, have led to the development of a number of very effective, promising seed enhancement treatments for better seed vigor, ensuring good field performance. And this has great scope and great future. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for your very kind attention and thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such a rich talk. Thanks for sharing your rich experience and knowledge with all of us. May we please move forward to the Q&A session, ma'am? May we please move forward to the Q&A session? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, ma'am. So there are some questions in the Q&A box. I shall read the question and uh, you may answer. Yes, that. please, please, please. Okay. Okay, so the first one is from uh, Amresh Ji. Is there any effect of dormancy on seed vigor? If yes, how can we overcome effect of dormancy on seed vigor? Okay. Um, this is an oft uh, asked question that what is the relationship between vigor, viability and dormancy? Uh, there is no such evidence which shows that there is any uh, association between dormancy and seed vigor. Uh, but as long as the seed is dormant, its uh, germination is not fully expressed. And therefore, it is also not possible to evaluate the dormancy. Got that. Next is from Bambuji. Vigor rating continues to be broad, general as high, medium, low, based on the benchmark kept by the analyst or the user of the result. So what is the high for one, maybe medium for the other? It's time now to get away from general rating and instead quantify in numbers with the unit of measurement depending on the type of figure test followed. Also, as with the standard of germination minimum, for vigor, also minimum standards will have to be fixed for various crops, test method wise. Then only it can reflect on the label and help the seed user. It's a very long question. I'm forgetting what was the beginning. <laughs> anyway, I got the essence. I got the essence. And I think I had uh, also answered it uh, uh, to an extent that uh, that is the main problem with vigor that it is difficult to give a, give a definite standard or a definite scale. It is always up to the testing laboratory or the user. For example, I am, um, I am the seed producer, I'm a seed company. So I will, I will keep a standard. I will decide that if, uh, if any seed lord is giving less than 70% germination after cold test in maize, for example. I will not accept it. But it is my observation. It is my decision. There is uh, no way that you can, you, that the officials or the any, any, um, any regulatory body cannot give that it should not be less than this or should not be uh, more than that. It is not possible. How will you do that? 
you you understand what i'm trying to say hello uh, yes, ishika ji yes 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 yeah Got that. okay ma'am so next pramod ji says thank you yeah. for the very informative information and his question is what type of weaker test can we try for q cupids or gods what kind of what type of weaker test can we try for q cupids just or just gods? a second just a second ishika okay i still didn't get you okay so uh, what type of vigor test can we try for q q bits or gods g o u r d s and g q q c u c u r b i t s uh, uh is 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 it possible that the person who ever has uh, uh, given this written this question can also uh, tell me show sure, I mean, ma'am just just a second voice, let me yes true voice this thing yes pramod ji i am just uh, giving you a prompt please uh, you can now unmute and speak uh, yes uh, good afternoon madam can you able good to hear me good afternoon yes i can hear you uh yes madam uh, thank you for a very informative uh, information on uh, seed vigor so, thank you uh, i also work on a seed tech department where we involve uh, to to develop or to work on a seed germination and vigor concept okay so my question is on uh, for majorly we deal with the vegetable seeds okay uh, so in 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 case of uh, cucumber beets like okay. uh, cucumber bitter gourds bottle huh. gourds Huh. And watermelon. So I was huh. just uh, uh, interested to try some vigor testing methods, which we can try okay. for for these vegetable crops. Okay. So you wanted to know which one to try? Is it? Yes, yes, madam. You can try. See, uh, I can't say offhand, but uh, you can definitely try anything based on uh, germination performance. You can either try. the seedling uh, uh, vigor indices based on seedling vigor mm -hmm. or you can even try the first count or radical uh, protrusion radical emergence you can try from there because see um, uh, the objective should be that you start from the simplest ones isn't it mm -hmm. yes, so yes, germination test in any case you are performing yeah. so first you use that taking some additional observation if mm -hmm. that doesn't work then you can go for next should be if i were in your position then next i will try a uh, uh, accelerated aging test and maybe after yeah. that i will try a conductance test yeah okay man i'm just working on a conduct uh, sorry uh, accelerated aging test so yeah. just uh, yeah yes man thank you okay okay thank you next is from raman ji how how to estimate its seed vigor for vegetative propagated planting material like potato sweet potato cassava etc that's not uh that is not possible for me to answer uh, off hand but uh, uh, because see there <clears throat> there the the whole uh, mechanism is different because we are talking about the fertilized zygotes here and uh, in the vegetative propagated material uh, particularly for example uh, he mentioned about potato now uh, uh, we we have to see the if there is any uh, i mean if it is a tps for example but he is not talking about tps if it is tps i can say something but in case of vegetatively propagated material sorry i can't comment got that ma'am next is from an anonymous attendee how can we improve seed vigor yeah uh, as i said that there are uh, uh, fortunately now there are a large number of uh, seed invigoration treatments available both uh, uh in the private sector as well as in the public sector which definitely improves uh, uh vigor to a, a very very significant extent uh, 
It can be seed invigoration treatment where uh, uh, the seed is uh, hydrated for a short while before the radical emergence starts. It has to be stopped and it is normally performed at a low temperature. Or there are other treatments like using biologicals, using uh, uh, growth promoters. And there are, there are, that itself is uh, the topic of one more lecture. But there are uh, information available. Got that, ma'am. Next is from Shamji. At what situations we go for seed testing of vigor? Pardon? At what? At what situation do we go for seed testing of vigor? Seed testing of vigor. What's yep. that? Or vigor testing, is it? Yes, I think so. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, as I, as I, as I mentioned, that it has to be for the seed lots which are above the required level of germination which is having acceptable levels of germination. There only we go for it. So it can be, the purpose can be varied. You want to use the seed where you are not sure whether the growing conditions will be favorable or not. So you must test seed vigor. Or you know that this had been a very old lot. It was in the cold store. But germination is fine, but you want to be doubly sure that the vigor also has not been adversely affected. So you will go for seed vigor test. Got that, ma'am. Next is from Virendra Ji. Is there any application of chemicals before harvesting the seeds for maintaining more and long time vigor in the seed lots? Mm, no. No chemical application. Got that. Next is from Maruti Ji. What is validated vigor test for cabbage and cauliflower? For, cab for cabbage and cauliflower, there is no ISTA validated test as such. But like AOSA, they do uh, uh, list uh, saturated salt uh, uh, test uh, for small seeded Huh, you know, you can use it for uh, brassicas. I mean, the tests which are for brassicas can be tried. Got that. Those can be tried. Even fluorescence tests can also be tried. But normally for small seeded uh, crops, it is a uh, saturated soil uh, uh, stress test. Yeah. Got that, ma'am. Uh, next is from Santosh Ji. How to reduce paddy seed dormancy? How to reduce paddy seed dormancy? Okay, uh, uh, for paddy, uh, the ISTA or even under our own uh, in in our own handbook, uh, it is referred that uh, because in paddy, particularly the scented uh, varieties of paddy, there is some degree of uh, dormancy, which. Uh, which requires after ripening. After ripening means uh, um, how do I say? after ripening means uh, you have to store it for a while before uh, it germinates. And to break that, if you uh, if you uh, uh, expose the seed to high temperature, normally it is kept between forty three to fifty degrees temperature for eight to 10 days, uh, the dormancy is broken. Got that. Next is again from an anonymous attendee. Can saturated cold test be used as a vigor test for top tropical corn sowings? Uh, what was the first part? Can saturated saturated, what? saturated cold test be hmm. used as a vigor test for tropical corn sowings? Okay, so see, as I said, that it was primarily uh, devised for temperate regions, but uh, if it is the, the, the seed lot is intended to be used in, say, winter season, 
for winter sewing it can be yes okay ma'am maruti ji again madam is it necessary that vigor results should correlate field emergence uh it 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 again depends for what you are doing it if you only want to uh, see the storability then you can uh, you can correlate it with uh, germination after 6 months 12 months 18 months like that but normally for all vigor test because our primary objective is to get uh, the best planting value in the field therefore the uh, correlation a good correlation with field emergence is the primary objective got that ma'am uh, sanjay ji asks is there any difference between expiry period for germination test and vigor test expiry expiry period for germination okay. test no for vigor see uh, that's what i am trying to say maybe i am not able to communicate of uh, uh, vigor since there is no uh, standard for vigor as such there is no label claim for vigor as such so there is no question of any expiry date expiry date will be only when it is mentioned on the label that date of testing such and such and such so since there is no date of testing mentioned for vigor, vigor so the the question of uh, expiry doesn't arise okay ma'am madhuri ji is asking can we assume if a seed lot performs well in the field if it attains standards in its first count if it attains standard in its first count normally yes uh, uh, if if you are comparing two seed lots and in one suppose on the first count itself you have got 80% germination means 80% normal seedlings and in another one you are getting 60% normal seedling and both after final count are showing you 90% germination then definitely the lot which has shown 80% on the first count will perform better in the under field conditions than lot b got that anonymous attendee thank you for the valuable information ma'am my question is which is easy and rapid test for estimating seed vigor according to you which is ra rapid what was easy and rapid test for estimating seed vigor uh easy easy would be uh radical emergence or first count and uh, yeah easy is that rapid again the conductant conductance test is also pretty rapid it doesn't take much time it's just uh, just about one day i mean overnight soaking and the next day you can take the conductance test so it will again depend on which crop you're talking about got that uh sham ji is asking in hybrid seeds can we go for vigor test any seed can be okay dr malika arjun ji is asking in recent seed bill whether seed vigor is included in cert seed certification and no 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 that's what i'm trying to say again and again it is not okay yeah uh, okay anonymous attendee aa test is based on temperature and humidity stress so can we test for all vegetable crops uh see in accelerated aging test uh, the relative humidity is 100% temperature is 41 degrees and the uh, du duration therefore is very short Mm, and at times particularly the small um uh, seeded vegetables or uh, even even like uh, tomato and all uh does not really uh, give a very reliable uh result 
So for such crops, it is better to go for a saturated salt solution in desiccators. And instead of going for 100% RH, go for maybe 75% RH or 80% RH and prolong the duration to maybe five days or six days and then uh, do the aging test. That, in my experience, gives a better uh, result. Got that, ma'am. Vijay ji is asking, is there any preventive measures we need to be uh, we need to adopt during seed production process to get good vigor of seed in Solan's yeah. vegetable crop? Yes, yes. Every um, all the care that are listed to be taken right from um, the growing conditions at uh, from from the time of maturity to harvest the process of harvesting for example too much of mechanical impact during harvesting or threshing or during handling post harvest handling uh, or uh, dumping the uh, the seed crop after harvesting and before processing under unfavorable conditions, all these conditions are going to impact uh, seed vigor in an in a, in a adverse manner. I got that, ma'am. Ma'am, allow me a minute. I request all the participants to put their question and answers in the Q&A box. Uh, please, we, were, we might not be able to share everything from the chat box. Moving okay. forward, ma'am, Samina ji is asking, if the germination percent after a vigor test is zero, can it be quantified with a standard germ test as such or standardize it with an alternative vigor test? How can, how can uh, the germination be zero after vigor test? After accelerated aging, does he mean? Uh, shall I uh, shall I allow uh, Samina? No, to... you, you for okay, for wait. for everybody where it, uh, there is some kind of uh, uh, ambiguity, you can get their questions through email. Yes, and I'll you can that. pass it on to me later, and I will send the answers. I'll it is that. not possible to uh, answer everybody's questions, perhaps. Right. Because there is a large number of questions. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Do you wish to take more questions or shall I hear henceforth uh, send you through me? Maybe another four minutes. Got that, ma'am. Sangeeta ji is, ask, is saying, thanks for a very informative session, ma'am. What may be the probable reasons for variation in weaker percentage of different lots which are from the same production year and stored in the same storage condition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very common observation. It's a very common experience that uh, uh, because he has said the same year, but at different production locations, right? Yeah. So uh, again, it just reiterates my point. This observation reiterates my point that conditions at the time of seed maturation the conditions under which the mother seed crop is raised is very important to start with. And then the harvesting and post harvest conditions, the same year from four different locations, it if it has been harvested or even after harvesting from the same location, if it is stored under different conditions, you are bound to get bigger difference in such seed loss. Got that, ma'am. Uh, from Dr. V. Shankaran Ji, we need not. Dr. Shankaran, so nice to so nice to have you here. My honor. I am honored. Can I can I have a one to one with Dr. Sure, Shankaran, sure, please? Sure, ma'am. Sure. Yeah. Sankaranji, please accept the prompt and unmute yours and unmute, please. 
Dr. Shankaran, can you please unmute? I think he is not there. Yes, ma'am. Anyway, what was his uh, query? Um, we need not wait for ESTA to validate and include in the rules. Why not follow self-reliance and Atmanirbhar concepts and decide upon our own rules for weaker tests? Yes, uh, sir, actually, you know it uh, <clears throat> better than me, perhaps, that um, it is easier said than done. It is not the question of our reliance on uh, ESTA, but even um, at any, uh, I mean, even at, uh, in the national context, it is very difficult to have vigor uh, standards and standardized vigor tests for all crops. But yes, I think over the years, a, a lot has already been done. And it is high time that uh, uh, the recommendations which are sent every year from the National Seeds Project, the coordinated project on seeds from ICAR to the ministry is uh, taken into consideration. And um, I hope this will happen sooner than later. Got that, ma'am. Ma'am, it is 4.50. How do yeah. we proceed? I think, uh, isn't it enough? Uh, yes, ma'am. I shall uh, mail you the rest. Question. My my voice is now uh, cracking. <laughs> I, I got that, ma'am. Okay, for all the participants, please wait until some time that I send ma'am the questions and she's able to put yeah, uh, yeah. them in another. Definitely, definitely. Yes, ma'am. Anything else sure. you would like to share, ma'am? No, I just want to thank you. Uh, thank uh, uh, Kiranji. Thank uh, uh, NSAI, Trivedi ji. And I thank everyone, each one of the participants, panelists who are present here today. Thank you very much. It's our honor, ma'am. So here we come towards the end of this extremely enlightening session on seed vigor. Many, many thanks to Dr. Dadlani ji for sharing her rich knowledge and very rich experience with us. Thank you, NSAI, for collaborating with us and helping us serve the Indian seed industry. To all your dear participants, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for participating. We are sure you are taking ba back a lot of useful information and hope that you will implement the learning. We will be back again as it has become Gopa's tradition to come up with such educative and enlightening webinars every month just for your service we will be sending you a feedback form by the end of the day please take out five minutes by filling the form and help us improve in servicing you take care all thank you thank you bye ma'am bye bye, -bye.